running OpenShift virtualization on-prem requires you to well invest in the on-premise data center. However, if you don't want to jump into the rabbit hole, there's also an option for running it in the public cloud, specifically AWS. Red Hat OpenShift services on AWS or ROSA in short is what makes this public cloud virtualization use case possible. What are the trade-offs you ask? Well, the good thing is you get the fully managed applications and virtualization platform with additional bells and whistles that AWS provides and no overhead for managing your own data center. The bad is it might cost a bit more in cloud computing charges. Also, not having a full control of the hardware layer, storage or networking mean you have to adapt what's being available with AWS service, which could result in workarounds. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how running OCP Vert on AWS compares and contrasts against traditional on-prem solutions. Spoiler alert, utilizing both options is what makes this special. I have two parallel OpenShift deployments available. First one lives in my data center running directly on the bare metal nodes. Second deployment lives in the AWS public cloud. It is running on a mix of EC2 virtual machines for both controllers and infrastructure nodes and EC2 bare metal instances for workers. Running this side of my deployment in the public cloud gives me ability to scale out my bare metal workers rapidly in the Red Hat web console. Try doing that with the on-prem infrastructure. Trust me, racking and stacking physical nodes takes a bit longer. The AWS deployment is new, but my goal is to provide the same functionality to this environment as in the already established on-prem version. And the best way to manage a single infrastructure or fleet of deployments is by defining it as a code via Git repository. OpenShift enables me to do that with the OpenShift GitOps operator, also known as Argo CD. Argo CD comes with an entire new dashboard dedicated to automating both infrastructure itself and workloads running on top. I have one tile here already pre-created and it's nothing but a simple HTTP server that will host my ISO images for the VM templates that I need to build. I'm going to build a new tile that will be responsible for enabling OpenShift virtualization operator. Again, the goal is to configure it exactly matching my on-prem environment. So I'm going to point this back to the same Git repository used to the on-prem deployment. The path to the aggregate will install and configure both the operator and the kubevert hyperconverged instance. Now selecting the new tile reveals dependency required to complete the task with all the events and logs in a single place. After a few minutes, I can come back to my main OpenShift dashboard and hey, look at that. The virtualization is enabled and a bunch of Linux VM templates are pre-configured for me out of the box to use. I'm going to deploy a single VM to validate its functionality. Now let's live migrate the instance into another EC2 bare metal server running on AWS. Imagine the ability to live migrate across availability zones. Red Hat OpenShift can enable that with a shared storage, such as ODF or Portworks. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that in action in a future video. Going back to deploying VMs from the templates reveals there are no Windows OS based options with available sources. Let's remedy that with our nifty GitOps Argo CD automation. I'm going to create a new tile and point back to the same repository I have used to configure virtualization. But this time, we're building a Windows 2019 server template. By the way, you can find the use repository down in the description of the video. Again, selecting the tile exposes all the components that go into the process of automating this Windows VM template. Checking on the Windows template creation process shows we're still loading up and configuring the image. It only takes a few minutes for the template to get created. Once this is done, I can try creating a new VM again, and this time Windows 2019 template is available to select in the menu. Let's deploy it manually first. Okay, but to really close the loop on the GitOps, we should automate deploying the VM itself from the Argo CD dashboard. We're going to create a new app, point back to the same Git repository used before, and select Windows VM overlay for the AWS. 
This automation not only deploys Windows, but also starts IIS web server and exposes two ports with load balancer. Port 80 for the web server and port 3389 for the remote desktop access. Our Windows 2019 VM is up and configured the same way as the on-prem version thanks to Argo CD. I can verify the right load balancer has been attached and since I'm in AWS, I can see AWS load balancer as a service. Web server access checked, remote desktop access checked. Someone out there will ask, why did we go over all this trouble to deploy some virtual machines on top of AWS? Why not just use a native EC2 instances? There will be someone else asking, why even bother with public cloud if they can deploy OpenShift VMs the same way for way cheaper using existing data center servers. And that is exactly the main point. No matter where you run this platform, creating the VMs, workloads or apps will look exactly the same way. Automating both environments from the same Git repository will reduce operational overhead. There's more. Deploying straight on bare metal, either on-prem or in the cloud, gives us ability to squeeze a maximum capacity out of the not shared hardware we use. To save on cost, we can even overcommit on the resources and tune it exactly to our needs. Finally, the best thing about OpenShift virtualization is OpenShift itself and its capabilities where you end up with arguably the best Kubernetes slash application platform out there with built-in monitoring, management, automation tools, enterprise storage, and a lot more. Virtualization is just a cherry on top. Imagine disaster recovery to the public cloud or cloud bursting. This is an area that would require a separate video. So let me know down in the comments if any of these topics are interested to you. In the meantime, I hope this video has been helpful and thanks for watching.